All right, we should be all set up. One thing I forgot to mention is that when you're setting up your instances, of course you have your thin and your heavy, and you'll notice that the axis coordinate corresponds to the weight. Uh, with regular, I think the previous value I had left this because it was a, I had made a new instance from this panel. It defaulted to 100. You have to change that to correlate to the weight width. And so that will be one thing that you need to change uh, relative to what I mentioned earlier. Uh, so now that that's taken care of, we can uh, create the two masters and then theoretically it should interpolate between and give us a kind of a medium between the thick and the thin. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put my um, I, the letter, the, the glyph I in here. Now one thing you'll notice is that immediately this kind of uh, taupe colored bar shows up and what that means is that this master is, does not reconcile with this master and of course that's because nothing is here but that is a super important concept getting your uh, font to interpolate correctly. There's a lot of things that can make the two not reconcile so it's good to refer to uh, the glyphs manual or the documentation in RoboFont, whatever you're using. In this case, I'll paste that in there, and of course now, because they're the exact same thing, they correlate. But if you get so much as a stray point added in here, for instance, on this one, if we decide to add a point, you can see immediately uh, that throws off the whole game. So if you uh, have a very complex typeface uh, and especially if you're dragging them in from Illustrator, you may you may find that some of the points don't quite reconcile, and so you have to do a little bit of uh, investigation to figure out where that lack of reconciliation is coming from. In our case, it's fairly simple uh, for the purposes of this demo, so it shouldn't be too difficult. So we have what is going to be our thin weight, um, and we can uh, change this to 100, and we'll make this one, we're to group this all, let's say we want this, sorry about that, uh, let's say we want this to be 900, which is super wide, let's, let's not get that crazy, we'll say 700, 600, that seems reasonable. Super wide, super, super nuts. But for the purpose of this demo, just fine. We'll draw this back just for easy math. I'll play with this for a second. I don't know what it is about this that doesn't want to make it that, but whatever, we'll leave it. I don't think that's particularly consequential right now. So we have our extreme, we have our other end of the extreme, the spectrum, and then right here we have the interpolated version. I'll scale this up a bit. This flies into the middle. Uh, and if you had several instances, uh, and we can certainly go and add one just to show you how that would work. We could say change this from regular to uh, light, and we make that 300. And I'll change this value to 300, and we'll call this light. And then we'll add an instance. Maybe we'll call this one bold or let's make it semi-bold, 600, like this, 600, make sure I get that in here, yep. So now we have 100, 900, and then 300 and 600, so in between those values, and we'll save that. You can see those show up here. Now when somebody, a user, for instance, downloads this font package, they can select from these predefined, but they still have the ability with variable font to uh, fine tune it. So if they needed something in between those, they certainly could. 
This works for all sorts of axes. You can have multiple masters, multiple axes, all that is up in the air. It's still the same thing. You need to have all the same points relative to your two axes, uh, and it should work fine. So the final piece of this puzzle is to save, or in this case, well, I think maybe we have to save it first before we can export. So I will save this to the desktop. And then I'm going to export a version. And this is where I stumbled the first couple of times. Uh, in the full version of Glyphs, you have all these as an option. Uh, in our case, we want a variable font file, a GX file. And this is where it will export to if you need to pick a new place. It's a little counterintuitive, but you just simply click on this. I'll select the desktop so it's near where I need it to be. Uh, and I'll click Next. And that's actually all that'll happen. I kind of waited for some sort of confirmation or something like that. But that should be, at this point, on your desktop as a gx.ttf file. So there's a few ways you can test this. You can export directly to your Adobe variable font, or your, you can export your variable font directly to your Adobe font files and then open it in uh, any of the Adobe programs. Uh, however, there's this really fantastic site. Uh, it's dynamodarkroom.com forward slash gauntlet. And all you have to do with this is grab your font, drag it in, it will load it. Uh, there's a few different ways that you can uh, type characters in. I already typed in a string of eyes, uh, and then this will give you the axis um, relative to what you set up. And if everything goes according to plan, you can adjust the weight on the slider uh, in a variable fashion. And that should work. And then this is all the preset instances that we defined in our font file. So this is also what your user would have access to through a traditional font panel. And you can see that it there just stops on this slider. They're helpful if you want to predefine things or fine tune things, um, but definitely not necessary. I find that I end up adding them into glyphs just so I can see the prescribed changes as they pertain to my font. But again, they're not necessary and have no bearing on your ability to generate lots of variable uh, versions throughout your um, types uh, parameters. Hope that helps. Let me know if it doesn't. See you in class.